What's up, everybody? Figure that since we're all self-quarantining at home all over the world during this pandemic, I might as well take the opportunity to talk about some of the albums that I like, so you can check them out and let me know what you think. Today I'm going to be talking about a band from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. It's called Polvo, which means octopus in Portuguese and dust in Spanish and something else if you're Argentinian like me. Uh, anyway, this is a band that started off in the 90s and it's part of the indie noise rock movement from the time. And it was led by one Ash Bowie, uh, no relation to Davy Jones. And what characterized their sound was the insane and unpredictable way in which he always tuned his guitar. He pretty much always refused to use standard tuning, so this gives their sound a very mysterious and slightly dissonant edge, which I really like. And even though they sound very unconventional and very noisy at times, their songs are still catchy 90s indie rock. Today I want to focus on their second release, which is called uh, Today's Active Lifestyles from 1993, released on Merge Records. Um, I think this, along with Exploded Drawing and the EP Celebrate the New Dark Age, um, show Polvo at the top of their game. You know when they um, when they perfected the balance between this dissonant sound and an incredible sense of harmony and melody. The riffs on this record are insane. The song that opens the record, "Thermal Treasure," is built around this absolutely nonsensical riff. That the first time I, I heard it, I thought, "What the hell is this?" I couldn't grab hold of it. I didn't know what to make of it. And the rhythm, that's something else, the rhythm is also very unconventional, it's very um, jerky, it stops and starts, it's like the song doesn't really flow, and it's very jarring the first few times that you listen to it. Funnily enough, um, the other guitarist from the band, David Berlowski, said that uh, he came from a classic rock-oriented background, but Ash Bowie didn't come from that same background. So the first few times that he heard Ash play, he, he thought, what the fuck is that? But slowly he um, started to understand uh, Ash's sound. And I think this is what happens with this record, is that the first few times you hear it, you're completely lost, you, you can't grab onto anything, but slowly over time it draws you in and you start to understand the beauty of these compositions. There's also a lot of instrumental songs on this record, which makes sense because the vocals were never that important. They're usually buried in the mix and, you know, it's really the, the music itself which you should listen to. Um, there's My Kimono, for example, which is like this beautiful labyrinth of intertwining guitars which always puts me in this trance-like state and it, you can't help but be absorbed by this perplexing complexity and at the same time beauty of, of this song. Uh, another one of my favorites is Time Isn't On My Side which features this, this really cheap sounding keyboard but it just adds to the charm of the song it just adds to the emotion of the song it just fits perfectly in my opinion uh, not every song is a winner there's stuff like Shiksa or Action vs. Five which I don't really care for, it sounds a bit too raw and underwritten, but that doesn't take away from the overall impression that this album leaves. So in conclusion, if you like stuff like Sonic Youth, Slint, 
that sort of indie noise rock. Uh, I think you're gonna love these guys. Uh, it never ceases to amaze me how they manage to come up with hooks that stick in your head, despite how how weird the composition and the sounds are. And even though this whole description of alternate guitar tunings and jerky rhythms can sound very cerebral, uh, the songs have an emotional impact and, and a unique beauty to them. It's sort of like this uh, perfect mix of complex, out there ideas contained within a three minute or sometimes slightly longer uh, rock song. Um, and I want to finish this by quoting what Ash Bowie said about his style and his influences. Uh, he said, My biggest influence has always been rock and pop music, but I have always loved traditional folk music from other cultures, especially non-Western. Also, I usually use guitar tunings with a drone element, and this seems to lend itself to Eastern sounding melodies and motives. I think most of my songs are basically pop songs, but I do not feel that I must obey any conventional pop music rules with regard to structure or influences or instrumentation. So check it out, let me know what you think, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.